at the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the factors that affect linguistic corpus analysis, differentiate how a language is used at different levels, and appreciate the significance of understanding the features that affect a linguistic corpus in natural language processing. Every word in a certain language is not actually a product of a mere accident. It is actually thoughtfully made. Yes, it is thoughtfully made. So when I say thoughtfully made, it means that it is a product of a certain group of people who have decided to call a certain idea or a certain thing as such. Are you not wondering why we call our eyes eyes and not nose? In linguistics, we call this one arbitrariness or just being arbitrary of, of a certain language. So for example, let's have another example. This marker, for example. So maybe you're wondering why we call this one marker and not pencil or bond paper, right? It's because this is arbitrary. A certain group of people sometime in the past decided to call this one a marker, a board marker, okay? So that is arbitrary or arbitrariness of a language. So this means that, I would like to explain this one again. This means that a certain group of people of a certain language or dialect produced a certain text at a certain time, it's here, at a certain time in a certain place for a specific purpose. So this one, for example, marker, the very purpose of this is to leave a mark, to make a mark, for example. So these words are marks of this pen. So this is the purpose. This is the function of this, of this thing. Okay, so this is the reason why a certain thing or idea can have different names or expressions depending on geography, geography, or demographics. Okay, so wherever you are in the world, please comment below what do you call this one in your language? In English, we call this one marker. What about in your language? What do you call this one? Okay. So, with this, natural language processing algorithms play important role when applied across languages. However, most natural language processing tools are most likely developed for official languages of large industrialized countries like, for example, we have English, Chinese, then we have Arabic, and also we have Spanish, just among others. Maybe French is also included in this context. So I really dream that one day each country can develop its own NLP tools for each languages for or its languages and dialects. So of course we do not limit or we do not want to limit the natural language processing tools on just these widely spoken languages worldwide. Okay, hopefully we could do that. In my case, for example, I dream of making an NLP tool for a major language in the Philippines, which is Cebuano, in the Hiligaynon, or we could have Tagalog. Okay, so before we continue, please do not forget to click subscribe button and then the notification bell to receive updates or information about our machine learning, deep learning, and natural language processing lessons. So processing of the natural language is affected by the different dimensions of variation in the language. So we will have them one by one. The first one is some languages, let me check this one, some languages have multiple varieties. So these are called regional dialects or tribal dialects. So countries like India and the Philippines, for example, are the best illustrations 
for this number one. Okay. Um, in the Philippines, which is my country, so we have some major regional dialects or languages. So we have Cebuano, we have Hiligaynon, then we have Tagalog, and then we also have Waray. So these are some of the major regional regional dialects. Okay, so depending on which place or island you are situated in the Philippines. Now, let's go to the second one. So the second one is what we call code switching. So what is this all about? This is using multiple languages in one communicative act. So this is very common for people who are multilingual. So again, um, in this case, I would like to cite the case of Filipinos who are very good at code switching. So it is not actually intentional in our case to switch our mother tongue and the English language or it could be some other dialect in the Philippines because in the Philippines, um, an ordinary Filipino should speak at least two languages, okay? It could be Tagalog and then his regional mother tongue, okay? But for educated Filipinos, um, they can speak fluent English, so they can at least speak three or four, okay? So what about you in your country? Please comment down below the number of languages an average person can speak of, okay? So it just comes out naturally in our case. So although considering this situation, I am afraid of losing the identity of our language in the future and may even put to the risk of extinction some of our minor dialects actually. So this is just my personal opinion based on what I have observed because in the Philippines nowadays, we are actually gearing toward speaking English only. Um, that's why maybe for some kids in the Philippines, even if they stay in the Philippines, they could not speak their mother tongue and even our official language, which is Tagalog or uh, I mean Filipino. So hopefully our government can still do some kind of strategy on how to preserve or, or plan, I mean, how to, how to preserve our language. So let's go to number three. The next dimension of a variation is what we call genre. So our natural language processing algorithm may process texts coming from different fields. Like for example, we have fiction, we have non-fiction, we have religious texts, news, and many more genres. It may also process spoken genres. Like for example, we have video or movie transcripts and phone conversations. There are actually a lot. Now, let's go to number four. The next one concerns the demographics of language users. We've already talked about this one when we talked here. Yes, it's here. Okay, when we talked about this one, about geography. Okay, so what is this all about? So this has something to do with the user's gender, age, race, and socioeconomic class. So this is very evident in the context of generation gap. I believe you're familiar with this. Okay, so this can, this can be extended to language culture. So sometimes you may not be able to understand your mother or grandmother when you are talking with each other. The reason is you use different words and expressions. So with this, we can also say that it also has something to do with the time that language evolves, okay? So if you could observe, your mother has different expressions. Your grandmother also has his or her own expressions. And of course you, you have your own expressions, especially that um, you are, if you're very, very young, you are, of course, your language is very much affected by technology. 
So also, let's point out that some languages have good corpora of texts from different historical periods. What is this for? Why do we have to study this? First of all, let's emphasize that language is so situated. In developing our computational models for language processing, it is important to consider the speaker, the context, and the purpose. We also have to see to it that our models are fit to the data. After all being said and done, let's try this. What are the different dimensions of variation of language? What is the application of understanding of these dimensions in natural language processing? Please leave your answers in the comments below so we would be able to have a very rich interaction and um, exchange of ideas so you and I can learn. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.